On December 16th, 2016, audiences around the world will feast their eyes on a brand new Star Wars prequel that hopefully won't have them complaining about it for hours on end. That film is Rogue One. It's the first in a brand new line of Star Wars spin-off films, and it means that there's more opportunities than ever to be part of the Star Wars universe. Now, ever since Disney and Lucasfilm bought the rights to Star Wars back in 2012, everyone and their mother has been clamoring to be a part of the galaxy far, far away. I mean, case in point, the search for the new Han Solo was one of the longest casting searches in Hollywood history. Let that sink in. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, many actors, many respected actors, turned down the chance to appear in Star Wars. Who were they? Why did they do it? Do they regret not being Jar Jar Binks? Find out on today's episode of The Dan Cave, where we discuss the actors who turned down a role in Star Wars. Leonardo DiCaprio. I know, I know, it's hard to imagine anyone but Hayden Christensen delivering lines like these. I don't like sand. But there's a universe out there where they were almost spoken by Oscar-winning vape enthusiast Leonardo DiCaprio himself. That's right, the homeless dude from Titanic actually met with George Lucas way back when about playing the whiniest dude in the galaxy far, far away, but ultimately passed because he didn't feel ready to take that dive. And Leo takes a lot of dives. He loves just like scuba diving on the Galapagos Islands. Super chill guy, Vape City. Don't worry though, he didn't just pass on Star Wars. Leo also passed on playing Peter Parker in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man and Robin in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. So he's an equal opportunity heartbreaker when it comes to mega franchises and real life. Burt Reynolds. Was your biggest complaint about Star Wars the complete and utter lack of a mustache on Han Solo? Well, you can thank Burt Reynolds for that, because the bandit himself passed on playing everyone's favorite Karelian smuggler. Much like Leo, this wasn't the only major leading role he passed on. Burt Reynolds was also offered to star in films like Die Hard, Rocky, and James Bond. Imagine that! Imagine Burt Reynolds in any of those movies! Oh, God. Alas, and a lack. A severe lack of mustache. Kurt Russell, Jack Burton, Snake Plissken, Lieutenant Gabriel Cash, Captain Ron, Han Solo? Actually, Kurt Russell, you know, he's played many iconic roles over the years, but the one that got away was everyone's favorite scruffy looking nerf herder. What's so cool about this one is that there's actually footage of him auditioning alongside future greatest American hero star, William Catt. You can't find Organa Major? I found it, it's just not there. Well, Organa Major's been destroyed? What's left of it is contaminated. And I mean, honestly, if they had to cast anyone but Harrison Ford, Kurt Russell would have been my top pick. But hey, fingers crossed that he'll wind up in Star Wars Episode Eight as Supreme Leader Snoke Plissken. Al Pacino. hoo -ah! It's hard to believe, but Al Pacino is yet another big time actor who very nearly played Han Solo on the big screen, joining the ranks of fellow actors like Christopher Walken and Robert De Niro. They were also considered for the part. They didn't want to let the Wookiee win. But according to the Pachinster, the part was basically mine for the taking, but I didn't understand the script. You know, that old chestnut. That old Al Pacino doesn't understand Star Wars, but hey, sometimes we can't really understand Al Pacino, chestnut. Benicio Del Toro. While Ray Park gave a great, mostly wordless performance, he wasn't always gonna play the horniest person in the prequels. No, not you, Obi-Wan, get out of here. Benicio Del Toro was all teed up to play Darth Maul, but then he wound up hightailing out of the galaxy far, far away after George Lucas cut the majority of his lines. Case in point, Ray Park only had three lines of dialogue. But hey, who needs dialogue when you're a double lightsaber fighting dude who just becomes a torso and Oh man, it was such a waste, he was such a good character. Why, why did you do this? Jim Henson. After kicking around ideas like using stop motion animation or a trained monkey for Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, a trained monkey, Lucas and company settled on using a puppet, which made Jim Henson, the brilliant beardo behind Sesame Street, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, and The Muppets, a natural choice. Unfortunately though, he was too busy to do it, so he recommended another puppeteer, his friend Frank Oz, which is probably for the best, because Oz wound up pranking everyone on set by switching out the Yoda puppet for a Ms. Piggy puppet, and then just launching it to the scene. I just have one question. Where the hell is that special edition? Gary Oldman. Over the years, Gary Oldman's transformed himself into some truly memorable roles. The mustachioed lawman Jim Gordon, the mustachioed wizard Sirius Black, the mustachioed dwarf from Tiptoes, but he very nearly brought his hirsute talents to the galaxy far, far away, as well as the voice of General Grievous. I know. 
However, when he realized that the film was being made without exclusively using Screen Actors Guild members, he backed out in union solidarity. And that, my friends, is why General Grievous doesn't have a mustache in the film. The more you know. Toshiro Mifune. The actor's so nice they offered him parts in Star Wars twice. When it came time to make the very first Star Wars, George Lucas borrowed a lot from Akira Kurosawa's films. So much so, he wanted to borrow one of their actors as well for his little space fantasy. They wound up offering Mifune the parts of both Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. Not to play both at the same time, but just like both in succession when he was like, no, not this one. How about this one? You get it. Mifune said no because he was worried they would, quote, cheapen the image of the samurai. Look, I kind of get it, but also lightsabers, Mifune-san. Lightsabers! And those, my friends, are just a few of the actors who almost appeared in Star Wars, but didn't. So tell me, which would you most like to have actually seen in Star Wars? Let me know in the comments below and cast your thumb way, way up while you're there. Be sure to join us next week when we talk about the story of two NASCAR drivers who find themselves tasked with defeating a horde of the undead and coming in first place in Talladega Nights of the Living Dead. Until next time, keep on digging. And a very special thanks to Ubisoft and Watch Dogs 2 for sponsoring today's show. The open world action adventure game is now out on PS4 and Xbox One, available on PC 1129. If you ever wanted to hack everything and feel like a superhero with anything you see as a potential weapon that's under your control, then you're gonna wanna check it out. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Felipe ODC asks, why is pizza round, the box a square, and the slice a triangle? What the hell, man? Are you like a goddamn sphinx or something? I don't know. Just tweet Kyle Hill and ask for hashtag pizza facts or something. Come on. At Stephen R. Knoll asks, dicks or balls? Uh... Neither. Let's go butts. At Lost the Numbers asks, which Overwatch character is your least favorite? Ooh, good question. Well, according to my playtime, Symmetra. I think I've only played it for like 11 minutes, but I'd probably have to go with enemy Roadhogs, especially if they're good when they hook you. It is so goddamn annoying. But tell me, who is your least favorite Overwatch character? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.